Hey everyone, it's Sean. In this video, I want to quickly explain to you guys the concept of destructive and non-destructive editing within Photoshop. Um, this is a really crucial concept because it can have a great impact on how you actually go about building your documents. A strong Photoshop designer or compositor works as a non-destructive designer. And what that means is you're going about creating elements or building composites or adjusting photographs in a way that you can go back and control um, the uh, aspects that you edited previously. Um, so I'm sort of going to show you a couple destructive techniques at first and then show you a couple non-destructive techniques and uh, hopefully try and highlight the contrast between them and why it's more beneficial to be a non-destructive designer. So I have this image here. I got it from Unsplash and uh, it's provided for you guys to work from as well if you'd like. Um, and what I want to do is I want to go and I want to adjust some of the uh, lighting values and color values. And to do that, let's say I wanted to adjust the level. Well, to do that, we can go under Image, Adjustments, Levels. And our Levels window will pop up. Uh, we can adjust our black levels. We can adjust our white levels and really increase the contrast. We could shift our midtones a little bit. And we could change our output levels if we wanted to. Like so. We have a slightly different lighting technique than what was previously employed in the photograph. Um, and let's just pretend for the time being this is the outcome that we want. So we can hit OK. Cool. And those levels have now been applied. Uh, let's say that we want to also go in and change the hue and saturation of something. Um, so image, adjustments, and hue and saturation. So we can come in here. We can change the overall hue of the image. Maybe we wanted more teals, uh, his skin tone to be a little bit more red, and the reds to just be more saturated in general. So we can get that just by shifting our hue to the left um, by negative 13 points. And let's say we wanted this to sort of be slightly more saturated because we're a huge fan of color. So we can do plus 10 or plus eight, depending on how accurate your mouse is today. Uh, but those whites are peaking, they're really heavy, so we just want to take the brightness down to negative seven. Lovely. And finally, the last adjustment that I want to make, uh, we can just go to color balance, color balance, and we can change things about um, the highlights. We can make the highlights more of a cyan color. Uh, we can add in a little bit more blue as well. We can go to the shadows, and we can make the shadows maybe a little bit more greeny yellow uh, just for some fun sort of color contrast. Cool. Sure, let's go with that. So, you know, we made all the adjustments and you're sitting here thinking like, oh man, like, you know, maybe I want to go back and change something. Maybe I don't quite like now how the highlights are done and all that fun stuff. And you could keep going in and using adjustments and really driving yourself crazy um, trying to make all of those corrections again and again and again. The other thing that could happen is um, this might be an image that you need to get approval from to put in an editorial piece. Maybe you're working at a magazine and your supervisor or an editor um, needs to sign off on this. Uh, if they want to change any aspect of the way that this photo is colored, um, you're kind of out of luck because you don't have any layers or any information to be able to go back and change. Um, and unless you made specific written instructions, you don't necessarily remember the color values that you put in or some of the other uh, elements that you went and adjusted. So this is an example of destructive editing. You have forever altered this image and uh, it's going to be an absolute pain in the but to get it back, because if we, um, you know, if this is a couple days later, uh, you've been working on a spread and that's when you send it off to an editor for approval or something, chances are you have closed this photograph um, and you might not have saved it or what you might have done is, you know, actually I will save it really quickly um, just to my desktop to prove a point when my computer loads. <laughs> so desktop and what we can do is just call this uh, tone example cool tone example hit save cool and we'll just save that great come on let's hit save okay so your image is saved 
and uh, we closed it because this was a few days ago and now you know you're being asked to go in and readjust it so you open up the image that you saved previously and then you have to start fiddling with your adjustment layers again and life is really difficult and you might be sitting at your desk kind of wanting to cry um, the option would have the better approach to this would have been instead of using these menus up here uh, which can be destructive because they're applying um, they're applying changes directly to the image itself. Uh, ideally, what we'd like to use is adjustment layers. They're the exact same options that are in your adjustment panel up here under image adjustment, but they're in a layer form on uh, your right hand toolbar. If you don't have these open, you can just get, the to, get to them by going window adjustments and it'll open up this nice little adjustment panel over here. You have things like bright Brightness, contrast, levels, curves, exposure, um, hue, saturation, color balance, black and white, all sorts of really fun, cool things. Um, and alternatively, you also have a little option down here near your layers panel. This is also some adjustment layer stuff that you can get in here too. So you can see brightness, contrast, levels, curves, exposure, vibrance, hue, saturation, and all that fun stuff. Um, all of these options will create a new layer and will be much easier to work with. So let's just sort of jump back in and start creating some new layer uh, adjustment layers. So we wanted to uh, increase the um, contrast, uh, adjust the midtone, right? We went in to our hue saturation, and I remember adjusting this slightly to the left so that everything was a little bit color shifted, which was interesting. Uh, we created a color balance for the highlights, and we made the highlights really teal. Um, we could make the midtones maybe a little bit more magenta-y, and we could make the shadows maybe a little bit more uh, green or something like that. And what you can see here is every time you create a new adjustment, it adds a new layer to your layer tree down here and they're fully editable. So we can double click on them. We have all of the values here. Uh, we have all the values for hue and saturation and all the values for our levels. Um, this is a terrific example of non-destructive editing because what happens is if we don't like any of these color adjustments, you can turn them off. You can turn on specific one individually. Um, you can combine whatever adjustments you made if if that's what you're into um, or we can just delete them all together and we still have our original um, color so or our original image to work from and we never actually once touched the original image um, in terms of uh, information you know what I mean we still have the original to work from and that's great um, the other thing about non-destructive editing is uh, the goal is basically to consistently leave the base images um, in your work, in your composites, um, as uh, untouched as possible. So let's say we wanted to cut this guy out really quickly. Um, what I can do, I'm just going to do a really rough sort of tumble version of it uh, when my mouse calms down. Sorry, just give me one second here. So I have my lasso tool. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a selection around him. My screen recording software really makes this difficult, so I do apologize. Just give me one sec. Okay, great. So I have, you know, his head very roughly selected. In a destructive uh, way of going about things, what you would do is, um, if you wanted his head on a new layer, you would hit layer via cut. And the reason why we don't want to do this is because if I turn off his head layer, now there is absolutely no information um, in that space where his head used to be, right? I just have this guy's head on its own layer, and uh, that's not really going to do us a whole lot of good. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to merge these two back together so I have my original image back in place. And what I can do is I can go and create another selection of this gentleman's head. And instead of layering via cut, you guessed it, I'm probably going to want to create a copy of this, right? So layer via copy works really well. I still have the gentleman's head, but if I turn off our head layer, 
um, the image is still completely intact and untouched so that if you ever have to go back and make an adjustment to something, um, that ability is there as well. We'll be getting into this sort of stuff a lot more in depth as we go through Photoshop, but I just wanted to make sure that you guys were sort of aware of the differences of some of your uh, workflow choices that might have um, adverse impacts on, uh, on your workflow as you move through. So always making sure that you can leave the original intact is uh, pretty crucial. Um, the last thing too that I want to show you that's uh, very useful for um, non-destructive techniques is the concept of masks. So if I wanted to crop this guy out, I could go and make a wonderful selection. Um, I could layer via copy him and everything would be great. Uh, the other thing that you could do, and we'll get into masking a lot more, um, I'm just going to do a very uh, rough and tumble sort of one, is uh, I'm going to create a mask that is... Um, going to essentially start to copy or cut him out. Uh, so I have my mask down here. Um, to get it, I just clicked on this little uh, rectangle with a circle icon and it applies a mask. Um, you can see that all of our adjustment layers also have masks and I'll get to that in a second. But if we have our black color swatch um, turned on, you can just simply start to paint away or paint on a mask, I should say. And uh, life sort of starts to work a little bit better um, and you can sort of cut people out this way uh, and the cool thing about a mask is even though it looks like we're destroying the environment he's in um, you can quickly just go and disable it and you get all of your information back or you can just delete the mask entirely and uh, you didn't actually harm the image that you were that you were working on. So understanding the difference between uh, destructive techniques, things that permanently alter images and assets in Photoshop versus non-destructive techniques, things that allow you to go back in and fully adjust and have full control over your assets is a great thing to really grasp at the beginning of learning Photoshop um, because you'll just have a more pleasant uh, experience as you go forward. Um, we'll get more into all these techniques as we build more complex composite imagery uh, but for now I just sort of wanted to highlight that workflow thanks for uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video